the morning to our work. Any of these families are always there. Streaming with us today, the greatest thing to see this message is a blessing to be before your presence, but I can tell you this morning, I'm going to 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 Dear Heavenly Father, we need you right now. We as a church body and all others, God, sanctuaries that are calling out, saying, where are the people? But God, we need trust the people wherever they are with your hands out upon them. I just come to bring the word to them today that you have instilled in me. But please, God, do not do not tell us, man, you never have and you never will, but we need you even more right now. So today, God, all ears are open and listen to this voice, and most of all, your voice. Our hearts are receptive to what comes their way, and we just ask you to teach us to love one another more, teach us to walk more faithfully in your word. Teach us to speak what you have us to speak. And Lord, let us always stay near you, God, at your throne. So in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. 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 Good morning to all. For God is the head of all of our lives. Today, we are calling out the name of Jesus. Because there's no other name that is worthy to be called, but he is. I would like to make a few announcements. I miss you all to our Antioch's body. And I miss all the visitors that come through the door weekly. But I'm so grateful that our spirits are intertwined and that we know that our God has us. I want to remind you of our senses that are being even now, with us being on high alert, a lockdown, our senses have arrived to us via email and also in the mail. And they've asked all the pastors to encourage members to please complete your census because we want to be accounted for. It makes a difference in the infrastructure and what they will do in their communities. So we want those funds for you and for the improvement of our neighborhoods, our schools. Our churches, we know that the churches and state is not mixed, but we're still looking at an improvement for the body of God's people. Also, I want to remind you regarding our giving. Yes, our doors may not be swinging open with bodies coming into the church, but you all can still make a difference. You can continue to pay your tithes and offer you can send it through our P.O. Box here at Antioch East, P.O. Box 298, Eleanor, Georgia, 30294. Again, that P.O. Box is 298. We also have uh, Zelle. If your banks are attached to Zelle, you can see the offer through that. We have our PayPal, and we also have our Cash App. Our Cash App is dollar sign, capital A, it's Antioch East, BAP, B-A-P. And you can send that right to the cash app and we will receive your tithes and offering. We just want to say the tithes and offering don't belong to us. They belong to God. And it's what to do to him. We understand there are those that are struggling, trying to keep a roof over their head. God knows that. But those that can't, we encourage you in your giving. Today, we will be going to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. Second, excuse me, that's 1 Corinthians, the 9th chapter, verses 24 through 27. And it reads, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. But one receiveth the prize, 
Surround him that he may obtain. And every man that striveth for the master is tempted in all things. And they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertain. So fight I not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be cast away. Those four scriptures, that particular scripture in those four verses brings us to a time when Apostle Paul is reminding others of his great work. They are, he's reminding them that I'm in this wind. Even when we look at verse 25, and every man that striveth for the mastery is tempted in all things, that they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. In this particular chapter, we, we find Paul speaking of the ministry and reminding Timothy what it is for them to stay true to the cause. We also find Apostle Paul making mention that as a preacher, as an apostle, he can preach the gospel no matter where he goes. But what does that have to do with you as a child of God or those that are trying to become a child of God? We want to talk about Ride or die with Jesus. Ride or die with Jesus. We, we know the term, what it means to ride or die with Jesus. You, you find many that will say, I'm a ride or die chick. That, that means that they are willing to stay in it, to win it. They will be with that individual no matter what. The going gets rough, they get tougher. And they also find themselves soon saying, I am obligated to this individual. I, I am willing to ride and die with them. No matter what comes upon the road, they're saying that I am willing to stick by their side. They don't have to worry about me. I, I will be leaving. To be ride and die also saying that I'm stronger than what people think. I, I'm willing to go with the one that's driving. I, I'm going to ride with them. I, that's just what Paul is saying, too, is that you got to be in it to win it. Apostle Paul would give two metaphors. He gives one about a race, and the other he gives regarding a boxer. In life, we have to run this race. In life, we have to box our way through this fight. But I remember when I was a young boy, my older sister, she got a license two years before me. But even before she got a license, we would wait till our parents fall asleep and she would get in the car and she would drive us around and we will try to put the car right back where it was before we pulled out. See, as the younger siblings, myself and at that time, a younger sister and a younger brother, we got in the car because we were ride or die. We, we didn't care about what was going to happen. We didn't even think about what was going to happen. We just knew that we were functioning in a car, and we were young, but our sister was driving, and we were ride and die. Had no idea that we could have died, because none of us had license, and we just went around the street and came back to the house, and I know that my parents knew that that car wasn't parked like that. But even Apostle Paul, he, he is reminding us that we in it to win it. Now, today I won't be talking about the isolation in the house right now. I won't be dealing with us being at a stay in our homes. But what I will be dealing with today is, are you willing to ride or die with Jesus? We've been in the house with our families long enough now, and I, I'm pretty sure all of our temperaments, and even Paul speak of it, is getting a little shorter because 
it does something to us when we are restricted. I don't know how many of you all are willing to ride and die with Jesus, but I am. I'm willing to ride and die because I know that it is God all by himself who has us. It, it is God who keeps us. But before I ride with anybody, I, I, I need to identify who are you riding with. Before you ride with anybody, identify who you're riding with. You need to know who you're getting in a car with. You need to know who you're getting on the bike with. There are certain people that love to say, I love to drive for the thrill of it. Those that operate motorcycles, you, you know that there are some of us say we like all four doors, all two doors. We, we like to be inside of an automobile where it's closed in. But then there are those that are daring to get on the bike and be able to ride on it behind the, the driver and being able to say, I'm going to ride or die. Are you a ride or die person? Or are you one that have committed to somebody and told them that you would ride and die with them because you believe in them? You better make sure that individual got their license. You better make sure that they have insurance because if you ride and die, you got to make sure that you got the covering to be able to address any type of accidents or possibly death. We need to ask ourselves, uh, are we willing to put ourselves out on the limb? I remember being in a car accident. I was as a passenger. I trusted the person that was driving, but they took their eyes off of the road, and I thank God that we were not harmed or bruised up as worse as we could have been, but I trusted them because that was saying that I'm willing to go with you no matter what. We put our lives in other people's hands. Not question the outcome, but we move forward and just wanting to be the thrill of it all. I, I, I go back to the Bible and you think about Joshua and Moses. Joshua was a ride and die person. He rode with Moses because he knew that God had called Moses. He did also knew that he was being prepared to take over after Moses had finished the taxes. At first when he got in the car, he had, he had no idea which way he was traveling with Moses. But God started unveiling things to us as we become closer to him. So when he had decided to follow Moses, it wasn't that Moses that he was following, but he was following God. He was a ride or die individual for God. But as God was driving, he reminded Joshua too to stay in tune with Moses. Because you remember that Joshua 1, God does speak to Joshua and tell him, to be strong and be of good courage. Because he's reminding him, what I did for Moses, I'm going to do for you. You're going to be a, the person that's driving it. You're going to have to trust me. You're going to have to trust me in reference to being able to travel this road. Brothers and sisters, we're traveling a road right now. A road that we can only see just so far ahead of us. We don't know the twists and turns in it. We don't know what God is going to do in the outcome, but we're riding and dying. We're dying with him. Nobody wants to die. Nobody wants to say this is the end, but we're talking about placing yourself in the hands of someone that you should trust. Today, brothers and sisters, as, as individuals giving you this word today, there's sometimes when I'm riding and I just can't figure it out. Just can't figure out what God is doing. Just can't figure out where God is taking us. Just can't figure out why this road and not another road. Why this hill and not another hill. Why through these roads, not the roads that I set desire. But then he has to remind me, oh, are you riding with me? 
or you're not? Are you willing to remove everything that was so important to you? That's what Apostle Paul talks about here with these crowns being corruptible and we being incorruptible. Whatever we're trying to win, whatever we're trying to accomplish, if it is not of God, it truly will perish. It will rest on us, like we said last week. But we got to get into the, the mode of riding or dying with Jesus. I, I think about Caleb. Caleb rode with Joshua. It was 12 spies, but two of them, they saw the same scenery from the other 10. You remember those two stood it up. They didn't willing to ride and die for what was right. They stood up and said that we know we can conquer this land. Even though they're giants, they said, we know we can do this. But the other twelve were not willing to ride or die for it. And so they're staying still where we are now. Brothers and sisters, right now you can be standing still. You really can. You, can. you can be standing still right now and doing nothing. But this is a time for you to prove your gifts. Because even in this moment of time, we need to be ensuring God that we appreciate the things that he has given us. Ruth, with Naomi, she was a ride for God chick. And the reason I say chick, that's what they say in the day that I'm willing to go for what I know and I'm willing to stand by. Or for her, her other daughter in law, it wasn't the fact she was a, a ride and die chick, but she was given the opportunity to be dismissed from all of this. And she was. But Ruth, Ruth was willing to go for the dust. She wanted to see what Naomi had spoken about, about the living God. But also she knew the heart. You need to know the heart of the person that you're riding with. You need to know if they're out for their own good or they're out for the good of the people or are they out for the good of just satisfying this very moment. We need to be with the right people in lining ourselves up. We need to find favor with God and knowing that he has us. We find Apostle John out of all the apostles. Out of all of them, he was the one that stood at the cross. All the others had wrong with Jesus, but they weren't willing to die for Jesus. And Apostle Paul anchored himself and reminded himself of who the Savior was, and he was not willing to leave. He rode with them from the cross to the tomb. He was just that kind of ride or die companion. Right now, some of us is doubting if God has us or not. Some of us are doubting whether or not God will get us through this. Some of us are doubting just what we are in our lives at this very moment is that I got on this road of Christianity, but it's not showing me favor. Some are feeling as if they have been ostracized, and others have feeling as if they've been gutted. Got it in the sense of that I gave my life to Christ and this is what I get. I, I know that we have to identify the one that we're with because you just don't want to be with anybody. You just don't want anybody telling you anything. You don't, you don't want anybody just preaching to you. You don't want anybody just talking to you. You want to make sure that they have the Insurance. They have the license. They have the ability to make a difference. Brothers and sisters, are we making a difference right now? How are we driving? Who are we allowing to ride with us? And how well do we do as a passenger? I I know that in in this world. Once we identify who we were, I, I want to tell you about the ride and die part I got. The one that I have is Sister Patricia, my wife. It says in Proverbs 18 and 22, Whoso find a wife, find a 
good thing. And it tells us that in obeying, I'm taking favor of the Lord. I, I thought it was a good thing, you know. I dated before I met Sister Patricia. I, I had those young ladies that said they were riding down with me. I had those that wanted me just to fill up the gas tank, and that was good enough, and then they'll leave me and drive off. I, I had those that told me that, Michael, I would die for you. And, and you know, back in the day, we heard that that was a good thing. But then we found out that they only would die for you as long as you were providing for them. But God sent me somebody that would ride and die with me. When I had plenty, she's been there. When I had little, she's been there. When God has given much, she has been there. See, brothers and sisters, we want to ride and die companion. But I also understand Sister Patricia can't do for me what our God can do for us. I thank her for being on this ride with me and hanging on and letting the wind blow our hair and we're watching what God is doing. I, I, I appreciate that and I, I appreciate it. When I'm trying to catch my breath and being encouraged, and she's giving me the words of encouragement. That's what you call a ride and die. And y'all, Keith, you are ride and die with us as well, but because we come into God's house and praise Him and to give what's due to Him. The next point is just realizing that we must be secure protection. I, I, I know that I'm safe in his arms. You know that you're safe in his arms. But I want us to have that same mentality like David. David knew he was protected by God when he had been called to be king. When God had already assigned him for what was due to him, it was not his time yet. So he had to ride and die. Ride and die with God. There were so many times that Saul, somebody who David rolled with. David loved Saul. Don't get it twisted. He loved him. He would do anything for him. But what happened with Saul and David, there was some jealousies that came about. While Saul's busy looking at David, and David's looking at him, David's looking at him with a your heart, heart of respect. Saul's looking at him with a heart of envy. Envy and wanted to reject him. But David stayed the course. See, even when David knew what was upon him, he still loved Saul. But God also gave David wisdom. David knew that he was on the run. He had to be in hiding. The same person he rode with his gold dog was the same person they had turned him. But God had to keep him encouraged. And God made a promise to protect him. Each year we look at our insurance policies. Those that have insurance policies, you want to make sure they stay up to date. It may change as you age because an insurance policy lasts for so long. But God insurance is never outdated. It, it is never old. It is never something that you have to worry about each time trying to upgrade or trying to add more to it. You just got to remember that God is riding with you. He is. He is with you because he wants you to know that you're secured in his arms. I, I know a lot of us need that security break. I want you to know that it's nothing wrong with wanting to be secured in love, wanting to be secured in finances, wanting to be secured in just your job, being secured in who you are. But in order to be secure, we have to have some insecurities. Those insecurities come in when you start, it's good sometimes to question yourself. It's good to want to know if you are in the right place, in the right spot, in the right seat, in the right projection. It's okay to want to make sure that things that you need are secured. We, we want to anchor ourselves in a place and time where we know that we are truly dependent upon God. 
I watched how I was just doing. Even thinking that I had it all together. Brothers and sisters, I, I won't lie to you. There are many times I don't have it together, but God does. There have been those times when I thought I could protect myself. I realized that the protection that I need is from the Almighty. He will protect us. He will shield us. He will guide us. He will be our compass. But if I'm riding with somebody that means me no good, if I'm riding with something that is trying to destroy me, if I'm riding with something that has tried to consume me, if I'm riding with something that's tried to overpower me, then I'm with the one who riding. There's no protection there. Protection is in Jesus. Our dream and our desire is to see this church overflow. But not only the church to see the world come back to the church. But we left him. We were not willing to ride or die with him. We was only willing to ride with Jesus to the next point. And once we got to that point, we were to get on. And we'll catch him on the next round. Brothers and sisters, you don't want to catch Jesus in the next round because the next round you may not be able to get on. The next round you will find yourself trying to throw on a ride and then you will be reminded. I tried to pick you up one time and you just wasn't willing to get on. We, we call his name just as we call Uber. We call Uber and we call them to pick us up. We want to make sure we get to our destination. But what do we do when we get in the car with an Uber driver? We find ourselves now, people are questionable about the driver, and the driver is questionable about you. We, we want to make sure that we're secure and protected. And I can't promise you. You get in everybody's car and you're protected. No, I can't promise you that. But I can promise you if you get in Jesus' car, if you get on his motorcycle, you're shielded, you're guarded. That's money that I guarantee. Often, I see race car drivers and want to know what is the thrill of being able to know how fast you're going and knowing that your life could be at an end. But for some reason, they are driven by that. They, they want that adrenaline rush. Just like someone that I've known who's a motorcyclist. Motorcyclists, you can find those individuals, they would get injured. I've seen so many of them, they would almost be destroyed in reference to the bones in their bodies and the disfiguration of their skin. But you will find them saying, I will never get on a motorcycle again. And the next thing you know, they're back on the motorcycle. Right. And they said, I will ride or die for this. What are we willing to ride and die for? What are we willing to do to let God know that we're with Him and we're not against Him? This is a time for us to be asking ourselves, how can I improve on my crown? How, how can I improve in my race? How can I improve in the boxing match? How can I know that when I take this ride, that I'm secure with the ride? How do I know that I am secure with someone being able to protect me? Brothers and sisters, you get on a motorcycle with me? I cannot promise you, I cannot promise that you're going to be shielded secure and protected. But I can promise you, you're going to have an accident because I have not been given the license of a motorcyclist. But are you ever concerned about today and tomorrow? Are you ever concerned wondering where you're going and how you're going to get there? Brothers, I'm concerned about all of us. I'm concerned about our emotions, I'm concerned about our 
spirit has been concerned about our praise and worship to God. I, I, I am. I, I am concerned because you matter. You matter to me, but you matter even more to God. We all need a security blanket. We all need something to keep us going. I think often I am a good driver, but I'm a poor passenger. And what I mean by that, if you're driving, some people have to take medication when they're driving with another individual. With me, if I'm comfortable, I'm going to fall off asleep while you're driving. And when I do that, I have been trusted the driver to say, I will ride or die with you. That may not be a good method of practice to have, but that happens to me. But then I realize that I put my trust in God when the car is operating. I put my Trust in God when there's another vehicle that I'm on, a bus or a van, and somebody's driving. But it's not smart if we went to drive and it's not a God. And what I mean, when we get on the bus with Satan, and we know what he's trying to do to us, we, we, we know that he lives to destroy us. We, we know that he just wants to get us at that pivotal point. But we got to remember that our God got us no matter what. We got to know. We got to know. Know yours as a driving destination. Where are we going? Excuse me. Where, where are we going? We know yours as a driving destination. Where are you taking us? What are you doing? Where are you taking yourself? What's your destination? We get so frustrated because things are not going the way we desire. We, we wanted to go left and we end up going right. We wanted to go straight and we end up going backwards. We wanted to climb up, but then we end up climbing down. What is the destination you expect from God? What is it that you desire for him to do? I, I, I remember Stephen there. When Stephen was getting ready to be stoned, Stephen looked up into the heavens. He, he saw his destination. He, he knew where God was taking him. Where are you going? Where, when you look up, what do you see? Do you see your future? Do you see your past? Do you see your present? What do you see in store for you? If you can't see anything, that means that you're not riding with the right person. Ride with God. Ride with Him and Jesus. Get on the right road. Get on the right bike. Get in the right car. And stop trying to take the external road. Just be the one that's going to ride or die with Jesus. It's not good to talk about riding and dying, but I want you to understand that if we're not with Jesus, we're dying. If we're not calling on his name, we die. I mean, if we don't surrender what we know to God, we are dying. I want to be in the right car. I want to be on the right bike. I want, I want to get a crown that when I ride with Jesus, I know something is waiting for me. I know something is waiting for you. I, I know he has it for you. And it is not a corrupting crime. You don't have to worry about it. It won't tarnish over. What he has for you is going to be, oh, how great is that faithfulness. You're going to be in the ride, and when it comes down to the time when man calls dying, we call living because it will be our eternal life. I love Jesus. Jesus was a ride guy. Man, son of God. 
What he did, he, he got on that cross and he was willing to ride and die out. He, he knew what was going to happen. Even when he looked down, he asked to God to forgive them for they know not what they do. He was still riding and dying for God. He could have said, I want none of this. He did it in the sense that this is too much. And he realized that it was the right thing for him. He was a riding guy to the tomb. He, he stayed in there for whatever many days that he had stayed in there, but then he got up. He was a riding guy to the resurrection. And when he ascended into the heavens, he was riding and dying. Death didn't hold him back anymore. There was no more dying to be done. He was just riding because what man saw as death, he saw as life. I want to thank you today. I don't know where God is doing. I don't know what he's doing with us, but I know he's doing something with us. It's for his glory. I wish I had the answer to you. I, I wish I could tell you that you won't question him at times. I, I wish I could tell you you won't get tired of riding at times. I, I wish I could tell you that the roads are not long. I wish I could tell you they were not winding. I wish I could tell you that there won't be some cliffs sometime that we get here to. But the person that we're riding with won't allow us to fall over. He's going to be the one to just save us in enough time to get the car back on the road. I, I ask you, uh, you too willing to ride with well, Jesus? What's your destination? He mentioned to when he cried out, and he said to, to one of the things on the cross, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Not later, but today. Brothers and sisters, you ever wake up sometimes and you're just tired? You wake up sometimes and feel like you're just useless. You wake up in the morning sometime and you just feel as if you've lost everything that was popping and popping. You feel like it's gone. And you wake up sometime and say, this is just not good for me. Even then, you're telling God, enough already. But he asks, are you willing to lie and die with me? If you are, you'll find eternal life. Today, brothers and sisters, I need for you to pray for me that I'm able to ride and die with Jesus continuously. I need for you to pray for yourselves and others that we're able to do this. I ask you to say such a time. Why did God ever allow me to ride and die with him in the first place? I'm, I'm not worried. I'm not worthy of his love. I'm not worthy of his covenant. I'm not worthy to even call his name, but he allows me to do such. Jesus, he walked being to carry. He rode back and died for us. Jesus, he gave up his life for us. He wrote it out. Jesus, he died for us. Make up your mind. Are you willing to ride or die for Jesus? I can promise you, if you are, his great work has already been done. Because nothing, no weapon for the against you shall prosper. Fear will not consume you every day of your life. He will give you a new opportunity, a new joy. And in the name of Jesus, I want to say right now, if you're willing, if you're willing to give up everything that you thought was so important, if you're willing to give our God a try, come to Jesus. The doors of the church are 
Our open brothers and sisters. We give total praise to Almighty God. Today, brothers and sisters, decided we're going to ride or die for Him. He did for us. Stay encouraged and know that God guides. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and rule the body of this now, henceforth and forever. Amen.